in this clip I'm going to show you how to paint a blurry background. So just for the purposes of this exercise I have drawn out a daisy. I'm not going to paint it because that's not what the focus of this is about. The focus is about the background. So when you're practicing this yourself you don't even need to have the daisy there at all. Um, or you can literally just draw the outline of the daisy. Um, don't put too much effort into your drawing because I don't want you to get hung up about that. As always, it's really important to be using a good quality watercolour paper. I'm using Bockingford 300 grams per square metre. Bockingford has a really nice sizing on it which lets the watercolour just move around on top of it really well. So that's, that's my go-to paper. I'm using my Cass Art Artists Travel Palette, which I absolutely love. It's got quarter size pans in it, so you get lots of colours in there and you can take this out and about with you quite easily. And I've got my two pots of water, one of which is looking slightly mucky already. The most important bit is that you've got one really clean pot of water, so that when you pick up your clean water, it really is clean. And then I'm using my SAA Imitation Sable Brush. This is a size 6. Love this series. Um, this one, I just sharpened the end of it with um, a pencil sharpener. Um, it means you can use it to just move the paint around. Um, may do that, may not do that. I'm not sure yet. So we start off with our clean water. And because it's a blurry background, we just wet the whole of the background. Just with clean water. Now you can use a bigger brush than this if you want to, you'll get there quicker if you do. Uh, just make sure that you leave the daisy uh, uh, clean of water, no water on the daisy so that the water colour doesn't go onto your daisy. Daisies are white and we'd like it to stay that way until we're ready to paint it. As I said in this exercise I'm not actually painting it literally just to show you uh, what it would be like if you were doing it with a flower in there. So there we go, I've wet the background. Now I'm going to go more carefully around the edges of the daisy using the point of the brush, just bringing it in there around those little gaps where you'd be able to see the background through the daisy. Okay, so I'm just going to push the water around because what I want is for my paper to be shiny. Lovely. I don't want any puddles though, just shiny paper. Beautiful. So you can actually see that shine, can't you, on the, on the um, video here if I lift it up. Move it around, you can see how that's shining in the light there. So I'm going to pick up a green. Let me see, it's a while since I've used this palette. I'm going to go for, what's this one called? Hookers. Hookers green and I'm just going to pop it on there and let it move itself. Beautiful, just watch that watercolour go. Isn't that lovely? Now it's a bit vibrant at the moment, so I'll clean the brush in the dirty water first, then in the clean water, and now I'm going to pick up some lemon yellow and I'm going to drop that in around it. I'm going to go right up to that stem. There we go, and you can see how this is forming a blurry background already, can't you? Still a bit vibrant, so I'm going to chuck some red in there, and I'm going to go for um, a alizarin. Just picked up permanent rose, but I actually want a alizarin. I'm just going to very gently drop that in amongst the greens. There we go, I'll just tone those greens down a bit. Notice how I'm not mixing any colours in my palette, just doing it all on the paper. Now then, maybe there's some um, flowers up here, that are some daisies up here as well that are in the background. So to 
get that effect. We just sort of go pick up the green again, go round, but we just leave a little gap where maybe there's a flower. Maybe there's one there too, so we just leave a little gap. Can you see that? And then we'll drop in a touch of yellow. A bit of that crimson to tone those greens down again. And then again, because it's all still quite wet, I can keep going back over it. If this had, if this had started to go dry, I'd have to stop and wait. Now, let's suppose there's something over here, um, something circular in the background. I've no idea what it is. Um, and let's say it's a yellowy colour, a uh, yellow ochre or burnt sienna. So if there's something over here I just want to give the suggestion of, while it's still wet, I can just pop that in there. So I don't know what that is, but there's something in the background that's just hanging around and being a circle. Um, and let's say it's got a red middle. So we would just add that in there. There we go. So it's it's really just make it up. Whatever you fancy putting in. Put some bit more yellow in. And who knows, maybe there's some red flowers doing this over here. I don't know. Perhaps there's something blue hanging around over here. Who knows. Pick up some cobalt blue. Just lie it down over there and it blends itself in because it's all still wet. If I move this around, can you see how the paper is shining? So whilst it's wet and shiny, you can add all sorts of things. Once it's stopped being wet and shiny, you've got to stop. You can't do any more. Perhaps we'll put some grass in. Some flicks up there. There's a big lot of grass growing. And then just let it blend out. So I'm not fiddling with it. I'm just adding bits and pieces as some as when I want them. And then let the watercolour just blend its way out. Okay. So that's it. I've reached a point now where I can't do any more because if I lift this up, can you see it's shiny here? But it's not shiny there anymore. Oh, I was going to show you what you can do with this pointy thing. So you can just sort of scratch into it. With that point, can you see how that's given us a, a few more extra textured bits? And because it's all still wet, it sort of... Um, moves the paint around without um, without you needing to actually add in brush strokes so it's quite handy I'll just give that a bit of a wash now alrighty so I hope that made sense I hope that looks nice to you and uh, I look forward to seeing yours <laughs>